Hey guys, Dr. Kyle Loveless here. Hey, today I wanna to talk to you about uh, psoriasis and actually eczema, and I put these two together a lot because they are skin issues that can be from common causes, but I wanna to talk to you about eczema in babies and in, in the younger population, anywhere from a year below. Uh, this is a really big issue now, and, and I'm seeing it with some of the natural pediatricians, it's all they talk about, and it's because there's so many people coming to them with eczema, so many babies coming to them with eczema, and it stinks. I, I've been there and experienced babies coming to our office where they're cracking skin, they're in pain, the mom wants to try to fix it. Today's video is gonna give you the starting point of how you can make those changes for you, or maybe it's a friend or a family member. Hey, make sure you like like this video, share this, subscribe to our channel, hit that button that helps you get more videos because we're gonna be constantly putting out information that helps you become your own health expert. All right, guys, talking eczema today and babies. And this really goes for the whole population. Humans here aren't separating to babies versus kids versus adults in terms of how the body functions. But I wanna specifically address babies. I had a question on uh, YouTube. My daughter is one years old. She has eczema all over her body. I had, only one, um, I had only on hands and feet, but she got it on her whole body. So it's something the mom had before and what recipes should I make her? Looking at that, that's a really great question. What recipes should we make? And I'll, I'll get to that, um, but I wanna address the whole question in entirety to be able to really help uh, this person and any, anyone with their child dealing with eczema. So the first thing I noticed from the question is I, I used to have, she used to have eczema as well, which is extremely common because here's the thing, when a baby's born, they're gonna get their mom's digestive system. In other words, what the mom gives them, if it's if she, the mom's breastfeeding, perfect, that's the best way to go, but you're still getting what, they're still getting what you have, so they're gonna get your microbiome, and we'll see generations that are just sick in their digestive system because of, you know, it comes down the line, right? And so the first thing I would say is if you aren't still breastfeeding and you are able to, do your best to try to do that or maybe find another source of breast milk that you can give your child even though she's a year old. Now, if I'm talking to someone that's a, a month, two months, three months, everything you can, mom, to be breastfeeding. But then also, while you're doing that, doing everything you can to help restore your digestive system to sort, support the baby. That could mean taking a spore probiotic. So mom, I would recommend the, the, the specific question, uh, if you are breastfeeding, taking a spore probiotic, spore-based probiotic, okay? There's, there's a few of them out there. And then the other thing I would recommend doing is making sure you're eating foods that are not inflammatory, meaning follow a non-inflammatory diet. Go back to just a few videos, of, actually the, the video you commented on, which is great, on nutrition where I talk about the core nutrition plan that we teach, which is healthy meats raised the way they're supposed to be raised, organic, close to home vegetables that are easy to digest, uh, take, uh, st staying away from preservatives, uh, 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 bad fats and oils that are hydrogenated and partially hydrogenated, and putting the good things into your body. So track back to that non-inflammatory eating plan videos that we do um, on nutrition. Myself, Dr. Holly has some as well, and these are gonna be really beneficial for you to understand how do you make your gut healthy. So the first answer to the question is, Let's make your gut healthy to help the baby. Now, if you've already gotten past the breastfeeding point, okay, well, let me take a step back. If you are still breastfeeding, the other thing you can look at is a food allergy test. Food allergies, foods that you're eating that can actually create an immune response in your body, your body has detected as foreign objects and they're creating antibodies to those foods. You can find out what foods is, is doing that to your body. Now you can start taking those out, reducing the effect it's gonna have on your child as well. So that can be beneficial. So you wanna look at yourself first. Then the second thing is go look, look at the baby and say, okay, what can I do directly? And number one, and the, I'll, I'll just address the question, what recipes, um, I don't know about recipes as much as just individual foods. You know, at one years old, I, w I probably wouldn't be given huge recipes. I'd be given individual, easy, digestible foods. And so I would be doing things that are low in histamine. So Google high histamine foods. Avocado is a great example of a high histamine food. It's also a great example of something that most kids eat early on because it's soft. It's easy to break down and use, right? So it's a high histamine food though. But then, but these individual foods is what you're looking for. You want them to be lightly steamed. I wouldn't give your child any raw food if they have eczema because it's really hard to break down, okay? Maybe, maybe some berries that have been washed or things like that. But for the most part, stay away from raw food. Uh, you wanna slightly steam that food and you wanna help make sure it's chopped up enough so that it's breaking down before it gets to the lower GI tract and creating stress in the body, right? Kids don't have teeth, typically, a full mouth of teeth yet at one years old, so they're not gonna be breaking that food down. So help them out making sure it's broken down. So again, individual foods and go with foods that are gonna be lower in the histamine response and easier to digest and real, 
okay? Real food, that's, that, that, that's a hard one in our world today because not all the stuff that is in a grocery store is real food, okay? And what I mean by real food, Cheerios is not what I would consider real food, but it's a very common food that parents give their kids. Anything with gluten or wheat is something you wanna take out. And I, I would almost consider that not real food because it's been so genetically modified in our wheat in America today that um, it's so hard to break down. It's gonna create an immune response which is linked to eczema in the gut. You can go on um, uh, Mayo Clinic's website and look up eczema. And one of the things they say is it's linked to food allergies and how our body responds to those foods. So sometimes for babies, it's just one or two foods that you get out. And then the other approach while you're doing that, you're eating real food, you're, mon you're monetizing, you're, not monetizing you're, you're making it individual foods, um, looking and in doing kind of a takeaway diet. So if, if you feed them a certain amount of foods each day, certain types of foods, and they still have eczema, maybe change it up to a different types of foods and see how that works. You know, some of the common ones that a lot of kids will respond negative to are eggs, which is very common to feed kids. So maybe trying duck eggs instead of chicken eggs. Um, the seasonings like garlic, uh, black pepper can be very uh, allergen responding to a lot of kids. Uh, onion powder, believe it or not. So maybe blander food with just sea salt. That could be a good approach. Make, I'm not adding a lot of different seasonings to the food. Remember, they're one years old. They don't care. They don't need this amazing recipe, perfect you know, enchilada mix, whatever, like adults need. And I, this is actually the perfect time to train your kids how to eat healthy is staying away from sugar. There's no reason whatsoever a, a baby at one years old should ever have treats. And I'm t I mean, like, there's no reason for them to have a cupcake, a cookie. Um, their first birthday cake doesn't need to be a real actual cake. I, what we did for our kids, and you'll lo some of you will love this idea, is we got a, um, I say we, my wife did this, I didn't do any of this. Uh, she got a watermelon and she made this circular, a big enough watermelon to where she could make a round cake out of the watermelon, right? So you just got a piece of watermelon there. And then she made a coconut whipped cream with no sugar, used xylitol for the sweet, birch xylitol for the sweetener or monk fruit you could use. And then she covers the thing and, and, and that is this beautiful white cake for their first birthday cake, the smash cake, right? And the kids love it because they don't know. They don't know what kind of cake's what. So it's the great, best time now to not introduce our kids to the massive amount of refined sugars and food dyes and everything else that are in these cakes at their first birthday because that's really, I know we, th we want to say it's for them, but let's be honest, it's for memory's sake that we are so used to. So just do a, you know, a, simple, a simple cake like that. So that's, that's kind of an off tangent there, but making sure that we're not giving our kids things that they don't need is going to be a huge preventer for eczema. And then now saying, okay, what does the digestive system look like? Are they breaking their food down? Give, them, give you can at, at that age, age one, you can give them a spore-based probiotic, you know, powder, put it into maybe a little smoothie or something like that for them, um, and that can be very effective. And then the long-term answer, if, if you're doing some of these things, I don't. Oh, vitamin D is actually a great. Uh, about 2,500 uh, IU's of vitamin D. You can have like some camu camu powder, which is like a, a high dose vitamin C complex, camu camu powder. Put that into a smoothie as well. These are things that help the immune response. Chiropractic care, very effective in terms of balancing the immune system. Every child should be under chiropractic care uh, regularly. It's one of the best things we'll see with, health, with overall immune response. And so I'm kind of, I'm chasing around these things here because the truth is, is we don't really know why the eczema is there other than the fact that there's got to be something with the gut and the immune response happening. And so try those things. If it's still not happening, I would say get a, a, get a stool test. So collect some of the stool from your baby. And it is a little early to year old, but it will at least move us in the right direction to say, is there a lot of yeast overgrowth? You know, things like that to kind of help address it better. So I hope that's helpful. Those are some of the things that we do. I don't like to go high, heavy herbs on babies at this age. Um, you know, an adult that's done with eczema, so like for yourself, organ grape is gonna be very effective for eczema. Uh, different herbs like uh, wormwood. I love one of my favorite supplements for adults is called Biocidin, B-I-O-C-I-D-I-N-E. Um, Biocidin, and it's a mixture of herbs that helps kill off bacteria and yeast and help kind of re restore the GI tract. Very effective. So. That, to answer that question is big picture, let's figure out why at the same time. Oh, one last thing, and I hope you're still sticking with this video since I'm kind of all over the place here. But one last thing on, uh, on kids, really, you know, the, the medical recommendation for when you should start feeding your kids foods really doesn't have a basis in physiology. It's more of a theory, it's more of a kind of an opinion they're giving. And so there's no real exact, this is when your child should start eating food. So what happens is, is we start giving our kids food early. If your kid, if your child has eczema, well, first of all, when, when a child's born, they have a leaky gut, right? It doesn't it really fuse up or close up those gut lining until about a year, 
plus years old. So any food they have before that, they can create these immune responses to pretty easily and become allergic to. And so if your child has eczema and he's three months, four months, five months, she's four, four or five months old, don't introduce foods at six. Stick 100% with breast milk, add some probiotics, add some vitamin D in there, and just try to reduce uh, giving them food or push off getting them real food for a while. And then when you do, make it very easy, low histamine, easy digestible foods in that puree form. Just because they starting to produce teeth doesn't mean they have to have foods that they have to chew on. Keep that puree form. It's easy to digest for them and can help keep the, you know, calm the gut and digestive system. Hope that's helpful. And uh, yeah, so make sure you like this video, share it. And uh, uh, eczema is something that kids are dealing with on a regular basis. And again, it goes back to the GI tract. Final thing I'll say is try to reduce, to reduce, actually stay away from all vaccines. If your kid has eczema, they're already in an overactive immune response. The last thing you want to do is crank that up with a vaccine. Um, uh, so be careful there and do your research on that as well.